So you've purchased a drone. This can be an incredible and rewarding experience. It can take you literally anywhere. Where will you go next? What will you see? Your options are limitless. But there are some rules you need to be aware of. Welcome to our Drone Safety and Awareness Series. Hi, I'm Dave Kalbach, Commercial Pilot and Drone Operator. This video will be the first in a series to help our flying community learn more about what it means to safely and legally operate your drone and what rules you will need to follow. The Rules Governing Drone Operation, or UAS, which stands for Unmanned Aerial Systems, can be quite lengthy and depend in part on the weight and size of your drone as well as your intended use. In today's video, we'll cover the recreational flyer and then later in the series, we'll discuss rules governing commercial operators such as those using their drones for aerial photography, real estate sales and development, or flying your drone for payment of any kind. Drone flying is relatively new and the rules are continuing to change and evolve as things go on. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below and ding the little bell. And we'll try to keep you up to date with the latest changes as they come out. As I said, this is a new and exciting field of flying, so let's get started. All right, so let's take a look at the basics here. Remember first, we need to register our drone. Flight can be no higher than 400 feet or 120 meters. The aircraft must be within line of sight at all times. Be aware of FAA restrictions or the EASA in Europe. Respect the privacy of others and never, never fly near other aircraft, fly near airports, fly over groups of people, public events, or stadiums filled with people. Never fly in your emergency relief efforts or fly under the influence of alcohol or drugs. So before we get started, there's three paths you can take when you determine what type of flyer you are. Are you a recreational flyer, a commercial operator, or are you operating under public safety or for a government function? This video will focus on the recreational flyer. However, this video series will handle Part 107 Commercial Operators. So as we said before, all drones between a half a pound or 0.55 pounds and 55 pounds must be registered with the FAA and have the registration number clearly displayed on the outer surface of the aircraft. As a recreational flyer, all flights must be for recreation only. This means you can offer your services to others, this includes aerial photography and imaging for real estate sales, as these are examples of commercial operations and they would require the user to comply with the rules governing commercial operators, or Part 107. Again, for recreational flyers, all flights must be conducted at or below 400 feet AGL or above ground level when in Class G airspace. But, what is Class G airspace? Do we really know? Well. A certificated pilot or a commercial operator will know how to identify the airspace they want to fly in, but this isn't that easy for a recreational flyer. Until now. So the FAA, working in conjunction with Kitty Hawk, came up with this Before You Fly app, and it makes this very, very simple to find out if you can take off or not. You can download this app on the App Store through Apple or through Samsung smartphones. I know of those too, but Before You Fly app, look for it. It makes it so easy. Let's take a look at a mock flight I did outside of Columbia, North Carolina. So I downloaded the app Before You Fly, and after a not so brief disclaimer, there's a lot to read there. So after reading that, uh, you want to select I agree at the end. And with location services turned on on your phone, it simply picks you up and identifies where you're at. So in this example, you can see we are clear to fly that fast. That's how quick it happens. If I simply place my finger another spot in the map, it'll recalculate my position. In this case, you can see it's not cleared to fly. I'm in airspace, so do not take off. Does that mean I can't fly? No. It means I need to review the airspace requirements for that area and find out what I can do. In this case, with ATC authorization or LANCE, low altitude authorization and notification capability, 
or with a written FAA notification, I could fly. So as a recreational pilot, this is a little more difficult. It can be done under Lance. Uh, however, that's something we will cover in the part 107 section for commercial operators. So now if we follow along, I'll, I'll look somewhere else too. Let's say I wanted to go out to this lake and see if I could fly there today. That was my mission for the day. So I put my pinpoint over there and you can see cleared for takeoff. I am good to go. I'm in class G airspace. Not a problem at all. Other rules for recreational flyers, do not fly at night unless your drone has aircraft lighting that allows you to determine its location and orientation, which way it's pointed at all times. Remember, your drone must be within your visual line of sight, or if you have an observer, it has to be in their line of sight, and the observer must be next to you and in direct communication with you. Never find yourself here with a drone. Remember, give way and do not interfere with any manned aircraft and never fly over a person or a moving vehicle. You never want to fly under the influence of drugs or alcohol and a key point to remember here is many over-the-counter medications may impact your ability to safely operate your drone you don't even know it. So you want to make sure you don't operate under the influence of alcohol or drugs of any kind. We can never interfere with emergency response vehicles such as that fire truck we just saw, disaster relief efforts, accident response, or law enforcement activities. We want to stay away from events like that at all times and let them do their jobs. It goes without saying, don't operate your drone in a careless or reckless manner. Recreational flyers need to know that if they intentionally or unintentionally violate any of these safety requirements or act in a careless or reckless manner, they will be liable for criminal and or civil penalties. Don't find yourself here. My advice, simple. Become a commercial drone pilot. It's the best way to protect yourself and it opens up endless possibilities, creating opportunities for you to get paid for your efforts, knowledge, skills, and your investment of the drone. Next, make sure you check out our video on part 107, commercial operators. There will also be a video in this series that shows you how to register your drone if you haven't done so already.